So uh, we know that that's not your keyboard, but your keyboard that's Reginald's Casio. What kind of keyboard do you uh, play? Are you going to edit that part out? <laughs> no, I'm gonna edit it. I've got, I'm gonna edit this I, part I, in. I've got some. I've got some Yamaha gear, but a lot of the stuff I use is is studio stuff, you know. So it's already it there. On, yeah. Yamaha what? Oh gosh, I don't remember. It's key, it's a Yamaha. <laughs> <laughs>
was very, 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 very mellow. Uh, where, where you going, man? Where you going? Well, I, I gotta introduce you. Who, who are okay. you? Okay. Who are you? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the basement. That's B A S S M I N T. Uh, that was a nice little piece, brothers. Uh, how y'all doing today? Okay. Welcome to the basement. Now. I know your name. Uh, you, in fact, you in the basement on every single last episode. Yeah, I try to pick everyone, man. Everyone. I try to pick everyone. Uh, that's because this is your actually, literally, your basement. It's true. Welcome to the basement, Thank Reginald Cat. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, thanks for playing that little piece accompanying Dean. Uh, tell us your name, Dean. Uh, Dean Strong. Dean Strong, a keyboard player. And we about to do an interview with him. Um, so... But before we get to that, we're going to um, introduce the panel of bass, other bass players is here, and then we can get straight to that interview. All right, so uh, starting over here, you can go on now, Reggie. Oh, I'm just got the moment. <laughs> starting over here, uh, tell us your name, sir. Buckaroo Holmes. Buckaroo Holmes, a bass player, a basement alumni. What you got there? Acoustic Playmate. Four string. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. My baby. Next to him, uh, tell us your name. Tim. Tim. Oh. That, uh, could you hit that light for me? Uh, uh, the other one. There's a little chain. Metal, little metal, metal chain, chain on top. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been scared as soon as you said metal. I'm like, I ain't oh, touching no metal. Human conductor. Right? <laughs> uh, uh, did you tell me your name, Tim? Uh, Tim Blackman. Yeah, welcome to the basement, Tim. What kind of bass that you you got there? Yeah? Got a five string PV Dyna bass. How you like it, man? Man, love it. It's heavy though, but it's okay. got a great sound. Brother, you gonna have to come back and let me get that interview. All right. Uh, so you can tell your story, which reminds me of these two guys right here. Uh, tell us your names. Skip Simons and Eric William Markley. Now, they have been coming to the basement faithfully uh, since 2016. This is 2017. And I always said, man, keep coming back. I got to get that interview with you. And I had to f actually literally say, okay, can you do it on June 10th? Today is June 10th, 2017. You won't see this until it probably be snow outside. <laughs> no, <Nah. laughs> August 10th. Yeah, it'll probably be uh, fall again. But they came back and I'm getting the interviews with them today. So Tim, that's why I'm saying, man, uh, you'll be on the list soon. And uh, well, Reggie, when you sitting over there a second ago, now you over here. But I'm cloning. <laughs> <laughs> we also have with us. Tell us your name, Rod. Rod Gaston. Rod Gaston, another bass player. Just like I was telling Tim over here, this is you two, you guys first time being in the basement. Yeah. Uh, but thank you for watching it previously sure. and stuff. You say you've been watching it for a minute. Yeah. So, uh, and I heard you over there without the amplifier, man. Uh, looking forward to you coming back one day and let me get that interview. Would Absolutely. that be okay? Yes, sir. All right, that's cool. And then over here, uh, sneaking in from New York, <laughs> is Michael Wolf. We call him Wolfie. You got to check out the interview we did with him and his uh, son behind him. Uh, he has an awesome product. So. You guys, you can come on, sit down. That'll be cool. I got, we got a seat for you, right, right there. And I'm sorry about that thing, but we always had those long introductions. Oh, I forgot somebody. A guitar player <coughs> and piano player. We heard her playing the piano over there. And uh, tell us your name. Gabby. Hey, Gabby Garrett. And uh, and then next to her, is, tell us your name. Emery. Emery Canty. Hey, Emery Canty. Welcome to the basement. Of course, y'all practically live here. This y'all grandpa basement, so y'all be here more than we do. So, again, sorry about that, Dean. The keyboard player. Uh, a friend of mine, he's been over to the house. We talk business and all of that kind of stuff, man. Welcome to the basement, brother. How you doing? Good, good, good. Now, we just heard you and Reggie put some music together. So my first question to you is, when did you start playing the keyboards 
and why? When and why? Okay. Um, well, and this was before I even had my own piano. I had heard that uh, in the classroom, the sound of music, and of course in elementary school, the, the movie The Sound of Music was always a big deal. And so the teacher started singing my favorite things, and I thought it was beautiful. And uh, everybody wanted to be cool and stay seated, but I kind of got into it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was the first thing that inspired me to play. Mm -hmm. But I still hadn't had a piano, uh, and uh, my neighbors had a, had a piano across the street. And so I started to learn scales just by ear. And uh, by the time I, I got a, my own keyboard, I was about 15 years old, and uh, started listening to a lot of <coughs> progressive rock and uh, jazz and, and classical. I listened to a lot of film scores. Um, and that was kind of what got me in. As soon as I heard uh, the sound of music, as soon as I heard my favorite things, that was just like the, the send-off. Okay, so folks, uh, in case they may, that might happen to somebody listening to, take a listen to My Favorite Things by Gersh, what's his name? Uh, George Coltrane. John. Yeah. Who, who made my favorite things? Uh, that was uh, Who's, who uh, composed it? I thought it was uh, Rogers. Rogers. Was Rogers. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah, I know it's somebody, yeah. but that's an awesome song. But you talking about the version somebody else did? No, it or was, the, or was the original TV version. version. Yeah. 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 Well, that that is an awesome song. That could that could inspire a whole bunch of folks mm -hmm. musically. Uh, Peter and the Wolf was one of my favorite. Yeah, I, like oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I forget. The composition I was listening to, who, who wrote it, but uh, it was a jazz. It was a killer jazz. Peter and with excuse me, and uh, I, I I I couldn't stop playing, man. That that was my my jazz like go to when I was just a little kid. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My first exposure. Uh, and, but this ain't about me, man. Uh, but, but the, I had to say that though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a choice. That's That's right. But 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 look, man, I know you're an awesome keyboard player. I done heard the different tracks, different tracks of, of you uh, on the, on social media and everything. And, and and the reason why we're doing this interview with a keyboard player, amongst all of these bass players that we just introduced is the relationship that we want to talk about. That's why we gave you a pass to come in here, you know what I'm saying? Because you have a... I feel privileged. Yeah, the keyboard players have an a, a, a awesome relationship with the bass, uh, and, 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 and your left hand is a, like... Yeah. Metaphorically speaking, I have a closet full of chopped off left hands <laughs> from keyboard players because they step on or, or what I consider stepping on the bass line, mm -hmm. and you know, at some churches here and there, right. and it's like, I'm like, okay, I just chopped his left hand off, it's in my imaginary closet, because he, he, he's using it yeah. in, a, in a way that's not complimentary, it, it's, it's more clashy, uh, yeah. counterproductive, I, I guess that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. But you're not that way, we just heard you with Reggie, and I just wanted to know your input on a piano, from a piano player's point of view, the relationship with the bass. Do you change the way you play your piano when you're playing with a bass guitarist or uprightist as opposed to when you don't have a bass player? Uh, well, that's, yeah, that's a pretty good question because, you know, a lot of times when I'm, I'm writing, a lot of times I'm, I'm by myself, but uh, I think the way that I write kind of lends itself to, to bass players wanting to do something because my, my hand my left hand isn't really that active and I, I think when Reg kind of heard me play some of the stuff, especially the ballads, uh, and, and a lot of it's a lot of whole note stuff and so even if you're playing bass notes as a piano player, a bass player can do variations if you I mean if you're staying on F sharp for, you know, 
two bars, you know, I mean, a bass player could, Adjust. that would be an opportunity for them to, to do some variation on that. Yeah. And so I, I think uh, it, it's kind of a, I, I think overall, I mean, it, it's just being being sensitive maybe in the, in the moment too. Um, I know that, uh, uh, I was just talking about Bill Evans, but uh, he pretty much replaced his playing any bass notes with just just by doing voicings. Mm -hmm. But then if you listen to interviews with Richard T, who played with this stuff with Steve Gadd, you know, he basically said, if, if I'm on stage another bass player, then there's just two bass players. That's how it goes. <laughs> you know, I mean, he was pretty much cut and dry with that. You know? So, so I, I, think, I think if it, the, if the end result, if it turns out great, then great. So I, I think it's just, it's just a matter of the composition in itself. I mean, if it sounds cluttered, two guys playing the same thing, yeah, then I, then I can understand it doesn't make sense at that point. It's, it's useless. And I, and I think uh, you should always be, try to be economic with your notes, you know. So that's my theory. Anyway. Okay, well, it sounds like uh, you uh, know a little bit about composition and composing. Yeah, I think and I had a little something to that, too, because when we and Dean started working together, we were just basically sharing files on the internet. He was sending me his solo piano pieces, and I was just adding the bass to it. And it worked like a charm. It worked like a charm. Um, he left enough space. I mean, he just, I had all the evidence of a mature player who knew when to leave enough space, you know, to, uh, to, to, to let things ring or not to let rings ring, things like that. And then when we sat down together for the first time, um, we produced something that was, it was, it was nothing on the cup, nothing rehearsed, blah, blah, blah. But it was so good, I showed it to Stanley Clark, and he thought it was him, something he did a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when that blew me away when he said wow. that. That's wow. awesome. When he said that, because, I mean, I was off screen when I was doing it. I was mm. playing that, but it sounded like upright, you know what I mean? Wow. And I was just listening to Dean, and it was a call response thing, and he had enough sense to leave enough room for me to answer what he the players said. We went through there, we just looked at each other, I said, where the heck have you been all this time? Because I've never played, I've never had nobody that I dealt with that quickly. And um, it had to be, it had to, had to have a lot to do with your preparation. Because we didn't know anything about each other when we first met. No, but it came no, together yeah. uh, very, very easily. That's beautiful. And, oh. You know, we're going to do an interview with you too one day, man. It's, it's been a while. If you go to our YouTube channel called, well, it's called youtube.com slash Ivan Williams. But if you punch in Detroit bass players 
and you go scroll, you know how they show you a few and they say load more? Mm -hmm. You go to the very beginning, this dude is like the second interview. Literally, he was the first, but he was the second one I posted. Behind Kerry Lacey, another awesome bass player, which he probably fit well with too. He's an awesome bass player. So anyway, I wanted to ask you about uh, your musical educational background. Did you go to college for music or you just uh, self-taught? Um, I did have lessons uh, on and off. I went to uh, Center for Creative Studies for a little while. Um, mm -hmm. I took maybe two lessons from a jazz guy. Um, most of what I learned was, was basic notation and um, you know my sight reading was never that good. I always relied on my ear most of the time because the things that I would hear a lot of times were different than what I would play on sheet and I was like you know where is that cool sound that I'm hearing and, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's like okay I'm gonna have to get that part by ear because it's just not it doesn't well, seem to be on the page. Anything so that you read. To me. Right anything yeah. you read you don't see those cool chords. You don't. You know, and and, and then the versions or whatever it may be, and you just have to play it. Which brings me straight to, um, you appear to like composing music yourself. So, how did that come about? How long ago? How did it come up? Okay, well, writing music. Um, well, you know that meant composing means writing music. But some people might be watching like, what is composing? <laughs> Yeah, composing is writing music, right? Sure. Compositions. <laughs> yeah, you know anything that um, uh, evokes, you know, thought. You know, I mean, a, a composition. I mean, most of the times when I was inspired, it was from watching something on TV, and then I could hear the music sort of in the in the background. So something that kind of tells a story. So I kind of modeled my, my style kind of after that.
Um, it wasn't until later, uh, when I started listening to jazz, that I kind of linked the two together. You know, and I listened to Lyle Mays, you know, he had sort of this sort of a cinematic sound, mm -hmm. and at the same time he was doing a jazz thing. I was like, well, that's cool, I can relate to that. You know, the bebop thing, it, it took me a long time to understand kind of what they were doing, so I, I kind of, in a way, sort of worked my way backwards from listening to soundtracks to progressive rock to jazz rock, and then to jazz, and I, then I could finally see, okay, this is the bridge, but uh, I, it wasn't until I listened to um, certain artists that were kind of crossover between jazz that, that I kind of, it, it kind of made the bridge for me. Until that time it was kind of, it was kind of mysterious. I was like, well, what are those guys playing? I, I don't understand, you know. Do you understand now? You get it now? A little bit better. Right, but, but, but you still, yeah, I, I mean, every okay. time I and then I'm thinking, okay, what, what did he just do? And wh where did that come from? Every time, man, I, as, just, as much as you study, it's a you, rabbit hole. You learn, yeah. <laughs> what I learn more than anything is that every time I learn something, I learn even better that I got more to learn. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. Every time I learn something, I realize how stupid I Really right. am. And I went through a phase too where, you know, I, I, I guess I was about maybe 22, 23, and uh, they started letting me play original compositions at my church. You know, so, you know, people had never kind of heard that style before, so they, you know, they thought it was cool, and so I, I got kind of cocky and thought I was, you know, the junk. And then I heard <laughs> a, 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 another person that was there, she had been there a while. And uh, she, she was an organist there, and she just blew me away. And I was like, I don't know anything. I don't understand what I'm doing. I, you know, I, I was like, you know, who do I think I am? So I think that was God's way of saying, you know, I, I this is a gift that I gave you. This is not yours. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that was humbling. So it's, uh, it it's, had I, to be. I'm, I'm a student. I'm a, I, I still am a student. Well, you know, speaking of student. Uh, who who inspires you like uh, when it comes to composing and improvising and you know stuff long, like that? That's a long list of people, but uh, give me and, and give it's me not the short list. Either. I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, give me the list. I uh, I liked a lot of the stuff that uh, Michael Brucker was doing, mm -hmm. the earlier stuff. Um, I think. Uh, uh, Ennio Morricone is a, a film composer. I think he's he's great. Uh, you know, he wrote, he wrote the uh, you know the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. I mean, the great westerns, the spaghetti westerns. Oh, yeah. A lot of that stuff, but also a lot of uh, romanticism in his uh, uh, in his writing. You know, and, and that draws from a lot of your classical composers like uh, Claude Debussy and you know Ravel and uh, some of the you know the the greats, Chopin. Mm -hmm. I love Bach. You know, Me too. Even though that is, that is that's still mind-boggling. Some of the stuff that Bach did. Stuff, yeah, some of the stuff um, he did is mind-boggling. And uh, of course, uh, you know, my I, I guess my first love as far as keyboards was probably Tony Banks of, of Genesis. He, yeah, was, yeah. he was like my favorite, and he and he got me in the in the scene, chords as being more important than just you know the flashy solos because he wasn't a flashy player but he was able to sort of draw in you know the, the audience because of the compelling chord you know. and uh, I, I found that was a like a key to, to really structuring you know well-crafted piece you know because there's so many guys that can play licks but you know to put something together and for people to remember it you know I, I think you have to have all those those ingredients
What about uh, <clears throat> Herbie Hancock? <clears throat> Herbie's great. Herbie's a deep guy, though. You know, I mean, guys, I, I can listen to Herbie's stuff and be like, yeah, you know, I get that. Like the stuff he did with Jocko, it's like, okay, I can understand. It was a fun thing. <laughs> but then if you go into some other stuff he's doing, it's way over my head. Mao you and DC and all that stuff? What's that? The Mao and DC movie that he had? Uh, I, I think, what was the one that really... He did something with um, Al Demiola oh, later on. Oh. That was just, it was just crazy. So you listen to these killers like, I mean, you've listened oh, to them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Harvey, Chick Corea, Harvey, uh, Chick Corea. Uh, what's the other guy that was... Joey Calderazzo. I mean, the one that passed away uh, with... Uh, Joe uh, with Another great one. Uh, I mean, I love keyboard players, man. I mean, Keith Emerson just died not too long ago. Yeah. No. Joseph yeah, Zawanu was another one. Zawanu, yeah, he was great, too. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially his solos he did on, uh, what was it, Heavy Weather? Yeah. Like Havana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Know? He just, I mean, it's so effortless the way he sounds. He sound. does it like he talking. He does, mm -hmm. he does. And he just talks. But that's just, I mean, I, there's a ton of keyboard players that I like, but there's so those, many of them. I, those I are the ones that stand out right for me. Right now, um, I would say... Uh, probably Mitchell Foreman is probably. Does he is he a solo my, artist? Does he play with anybody? Well, Mitchell Foreman, he's played with yeah, everybody from uh, Mahavishnu Vishnu Orchestra to um, Brecker Brothers. He played with uh, Michael Brecker. He's played with Massini. He's played with uh, uh, just about all the guys that came out of the the Miles Davis alumni I and mean, all all of those guys. But yet nobody's ever really. I've mentioned Mitchell Foreman. They're like, who's Mitchell Foreman? You know, well, we I mean, gonna, so diverse. You know? That's why we ask these questions so we can look them up, man. So uh, I got I just got just a couple of more questions for you. Uh, sure. uh, which shouldn't be too difficult for you. Uh, what is your ultimate goal as a artist? Goal as an artist. Well, for me, and if anybody, if I didn't make that clear I mean I am a Christian so my my ultimate goal is to glorify God in what I'm doing that's that's the yeah, ultimate yeah. for me that that means more than anything else you know um, and I hope that when I interact with other musicians whether it's musically or just talking that I, I'm, I'm some kind of a, an influence um, in them wanting to maybe draw closer to him and and and, and just closer to each other, because I mean, it's all about relationships. I mean, what we're doing now, you know, I mean, if we walk out and don't say anything to each other, then it's, it's very sterile, isn't it? I mean, it's just uh, the relationship part has got to be there in whatever you do, especially something as involved as, as music, because music can be two-sided. It can be either extremely selfish, or it can be very relational, you know? So it has a twofold benefit, and that's how we know it's a gift because you can misuse a gift and then you can use it the right way. Yeah. So I, I know it comes from a higher power. So.
me as a Christian myself, I play every Sunday uh, at my church, uh, unless I'm out playing somewhere outside of, uh, of, 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 well, let's just call it what it is, Inkster. Because that's where my church is in Inkster. And um, so if I wanted to come and see you, and where could I come see you play? At your church? Uh, I do play at my church like uh, once a month. And, so, and where is your church name of it? What's the location? It's oh. called Rock Church, and uh, it's uh, in New Haven. Good. So uh, it'll be kind of a drive, but it'll be worth the drive. <laughs> right. I mean, and, you know, I come and see you play and I mean, and get my worship on at the same time, of right? Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. I mean, that that's that's what it's all about. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I'm usually there uh, playing at least once a month. They have other other people that they sort of rotate. There, it's, it's a relatively, mm. relatively big church. Well, where else do you play besides? Uh, uh, I play at home in my living room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I'm available for session work. Right, because uh, look, I, I know for a fact that you're an awesome uh, keyboard player. At, um, you say that you're available for session work. Um, yes, I am. Uh, as a matter of fact, is that the only thing you're available for? I mean, what what are you willing to do as a keyboard player now? Right now, um, I mean, I just got done, I, I guess a couple of weeks ago, I, I did a wedding for a friend, you know, and, and a lot of people think that uh, a lot of the ballads that I write are, and, and my style of playing can be conducive for that. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, and that's, yeah. I've been doing weddings since I was like 19, 20 years old. I mean, that was, that was kind of like my, my big, Break. Okay. Okay. Well, just give me a, a sample of something that you might do at a wedding, right quick. Just a small, just a, just a little inklet of what something that you might do. Oh, uh, at a wedding? Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I wrote a song called Portrait. Um, I'll just kind of play you a part of it. Yeah. Awesome. I like your voice. I like your voicings, man. Everybody, yeah, yeah, you can yeah, tell the too. difference of how people voice their chords. And what I mean by voicings is like what inversions they use and how they position it with uh, the other chords, you know, mm -hmm. which is an awesome thing. Do you teach lessons? I mean, uh, I do teach lessons on and off. Um, and I, I do like, I love teaching kids. As a matter of fact, I was just. Uh, I was talking to Reggie's uh, granddaughter. I was I was writing out a little lesson for her. <laughs> I actually traced her hand on, on a sheet of paper just to let her know her finger numbers because that was kind of the big thing when I was teaching kids. I, I was like, you can't look at this as every good boy does fine. So you'll make it a two-step process mm -hmm. when you do that. You have to see it as spacing between your fingers. You don't want to think about it. Right. So. Mm -hmm. well, and um, that brings me to when me and you was hanging out once. Yeah. We were putting trying to put together a uh, how to you know Skype lessons have that worked out for you yet? You know what I I I didn't pursue it. I don't I don't know what stopped me. I I, I think something else came up. I I probably got hired somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh yeah, you were looking for a job too at, at the I time. Was, I was at. Remember I went to your I went to your place. And right. I was like yeah man I got to figure something out and then mm -hmm. Reggie was like well go see Ive you know I was like okay well and you had all this elaborate stuff and I was like. <laughs> I don't know if That's I can. too much work. <laughs> I, I was like, I need the money now. <laughs> right, right. What's that? That did it again. Okay.
there's different instruments doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. and I'm just kind of. We're gonna uh, tell people how to get in contact with you. Uh, if they want to be able to hire you for session work, if they want to hire you for weddings and 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 he's folks, he's not limited to weddings. He does bar mitzvahs. Uh, uh, seances, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Not seances. I what? told you I was a Christian. <laughs> I mean, you know, the guy. In other words, he want he wants to play, and um, oh, um, <laughs> anything. I mean, anything coming up live that that you know you yeah, got some gigs actually, coming yeah, up. And I I, I make, want to make sure that I that I mention that. I don't know if you know Marvin Sheets. No. Um, but I've heard the name. He plays with a group player. called uh, Inner Spirit Project. Uh -huh. and, uh, you know, these are bunch of cool guys but they, they they play a lot of covers they're all christians and uh, uh they're actually going to be playing i'm going to be playing with them uh at for the um make music today thing on on june 21st on wednesday so that's going to be at bird's marketplace so that'll be at seven o'clock um we won't be playing any uh, you know any of my originals or anything like that but we will be doing a lot of cool stuff so billy cobham and uh, i i think uh what else do you have on the list uh Oh, quite a variety from Billy Cobham to Luther Vandross to so you know, you're, a of, he had a lot of neat stuff on there are you willing to play with other artists like like say somebody here you they like hey, well, how do we get in touch with this guy were you were you open for playing with others well I yeah I am in, in terms of a really uh, more a uh, recording session type thing you know uh -huh. this is sort of a more or less a favor that I'm doing for the guys to play. I don't. I generally don't play out because I, I don't have a lot of time to do yeah. that. Um, well, but, why, why, why don't you have a lot of time if you don't mind me asking? Uh, well, currently I'm. I'm. I've got uh, two jobs that I work at the same time. So, uh -huh. um, and and I'm also doing a little bit of proofreading on the side. I do a lot of different things. So right. I kind of had to find something that was going to fit in this little slot, and so I, I thought. It Recordings would probably be perfect, you know. If I get an MP3 from somebody, they can email it to me. I say, okay, let me know if you like this. Um, I think Reggie's ideal of skyping was probably perfect because, you know, I mean, you you can you can get a lot done that way without sacrificing your seat. And then the fact that you know, you know, some people have a family, which I do. Right. You two kids in college, two, two. Uh, yeah, I got one going into college, and I got another that's in college, mm -hmm. which. Uh, also brought me here. <laughs> well, you know the funny the funny thing about uh, life, it sure can mess up a it's musician. A uh, yeah, you know what I mean? I mean. Well, I used to see it as that. Let me let me just say this because uh, that's in, that's important because I, I used to see it as something that was interrupting me. But you know what I heard McCoy Tyner say it, and McCoy Tyner, I didn't even mention him, but he was one of my favorite uh, jazz pianists. Mm -hmm. I mean, it still is. It just to me. He just he drew me in more more to jazz, maybe the, the harder bebop stuff. <coughs> and uh, he mentioned that uh, if all you are is about music, and you know, he, he's like, you don't really have much of a story to tell. You know, I mean, having a family should not be an interruption. It should actually enhance what you're mm -hmm. doing because a lot of stuff can come out of that, not necessarily be an interruption to it. I think Oscar Peterson had it the wrong way, and he admitted it later that it was a big mistake for him to get involved. And be so consumed with music that he was doing. I mean, he he was awesome. But uh, if you look at the background on him and so many other these musicians that, you know, they placed so much emphasis on that, they they never came gave time for the relationship. And I and I'm wondering if that's a maybe a big part of why their lives were so tragic. It is. You know, because they've got a void there, and they think the solution is putting more time into the thing that brings them praise. But it's, it's, it's that, not the answer. That would, you know what, this would be a great round table topic because as somebody who wanted to be out there more, was like, life got in the way. I had to work third shift for like yeah. eight years. Right. Third shift is like mm. from the gig time to the end of gig time, it's like I couldn't do it because I had to work. Right. But I rather had been playing music. Now, right. if I had been playing music I, I might have been like this is I don't want to do this anymore you know so that would be a great round table discussion because it's pros and cons to it all mm -hmm. well so we uh, we're going to leave that there but that was a, a great insight some people might uh, see it the same way you do it's and important I, to see the end of the day you know at the end of the day when all is said and done 
you know, what do you want people to remember you by? You know, I mean, do you want just them to remember this one aspect of, well, he was great at this, but man, the rest of his life was like this. Or do you mm -hmm. want him to remember, yeah, he was a great guy, and he was a great musician, and he was great with this, you know? I mean, it's like when I heard you, uh, you know, when I, when I heard you share about the, the wolf bone thing, and you know, I mean, it's like you, you seem like such a down-to-earth guy. It's like you got it all, you understand the value of that, you know, the relationship with your son, and, and you know, that stuff's important. Mm -hmm. Okay, man, well, look, I ain't want to keep you, man, but I do want people to have the opportunity to contact you in case uh, it's some, you know, some, some stuff needed. Man, I might be calling you one day. I, I forgot all about you until I saw you today when you pulled up in the car. Give me my number before I leave. I got your number. <laughs> it's, it's in here. Uh, but if we wanted to contact you, do you have like social media available, YouTube channels I'm on Facebook. where we can see your stuff? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm on Facebook. Uh, if you go to, if you type in my name, Dean Strong, and then type in Digital Garden or, or The Ark, you'll pull, you'll, you'll see Dean Strong on there. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I should probably tell you, I set up a YouTube channel a few years back and I lost my credentials, and I've been trying to get back into it. Oh, <laughs> so you'll see one, and uh, if I don't respond to you, just leave something at a comment in your email, and I'll get on there. But on Dean Strong one, I don't know how to get back into it. Oh, but we, but we, get it. but it's me. I, yeah. I, I lost my credentials, and by that time, they had already switched over to Google mm -hmm. as a login. Remember when it was just YouTube? Wow. Right. I was there during the YouTube, and I didn't change over, oh. and so I, I didn't have my credentials. Mm. So but we can still look at can, some of the can stuff. We still look at it, right. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, man, um, and, and your Facebook's Dean Strong on Facebook, and then this Dean Strong on uh, YouTube, right? Yep. 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 Okay, is there any other ways we can contact you? 
besides that. Um, you know, like if we wanted to hire you for uh, a, a wedding or a party or... Well, you can email me. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, if you can... Uh, if you can catch this email, it's, it's kind of a tricky I'm gonna I'm gonna put it right down here at the bottom. Okay, it's it's D Strong. That's D as in David Strong. It's Crow with an E on the end. C R O W E four three two at gmail dot com. So D Strong <laughs> Crow with an E four three two at gmail dot com. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was gonna say, you know, we have we went to play at weddings or funeral. I started to say funeral, but I'm a, I'm, a, I'm not gonna say that, you know. But would you play at a funeral too? If somebody needs you to play? Would I play at a funeral? Yeah, I, I think that I, I would. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I would. It's a gig, yeah. Man, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, <laughs> that's not the first thing I would think. It's a gig, and the gig got some purpose to it. Right, right. You know, yeah. that's if it's a, it's a gig that fits in your yeah. under your uh, umbrella. Uh, I guess I, you know, my my only inhibitions about it might be the fact that I've never played at a funeral before, so I would have to think of you know something right. that was conducive for that. So. Do you sing? No, I don't sing at all. Can you sing? I can uh, sing within a key to let you know a key you're on, but as far as the quality of my voice, right, right. You I'm the same. Like that very much. I'm, I'm the same way. I can sing any note you want me oh, to, yeah, yeah. but that's it. That, tell you no melody. I can tell you any of that stuff, but I can't. I can't do what they do, even if they're flat. So well, look, man, I ain't want to keep you. I just want to know how I can contact you uh, in the future and everything, man. And you've enlightened us with. Uh, uh, your knowledge and, and, and relationship with the bass guitar. I appreciate that. So, uh, can you just play us a little something out, man, so we can get on to our next interview? All right. Uh, I'll make this quick.